What we're going to talk about um, in this conversation, in this video, is how to be a brain surgeon, but you don't get your hands dirty. How can you consciously manipulate your students' brains to be engaged and they don't know what you're doing? How can you as a classroom teacher know what the folks who build video games for your students that they're addicted to, they're just, or marketing people, they're just taking what we know about the neurotransmitters in our brain and they're delivering their product through that. So if marketers know how to keep us engaged and the, the folks who build video games know how to keep us engaged, I think it's time as educators, we know how to manipulate the neurotransmitters. Anytime you have your students make a prediction whether they're wrong or right, they get a shot of dopamine. Dopamine is one of the happy chemicals, right? We talk about happy neurotransmitters. Dopamine's the mom of all of those. Uh, we, I like to say we're dope fiends for dopamine. It's our reward chemical. Every time we accomplish a goal, we get a shot of dopamine and we feel good. It's our reward chemical. In fact, your apathetic students, laziness is linked to low levels of dopamine. So as a classroom teacher, there's not a reason in the world that your students should have low levels of dopamine. You can orchestrate the way you do things in the classroom that your kids are always getting that shot of dopamine. So it brings them out of that lazy, apathetic mode into a more engaged mode. One of the simplest ways to do that is when you have goals in the classroom, break them down into small achievable bits. You can even have your students check off when they're done with this. Every time they make a check, and you know this because you feel good when you check things off your to-do list, that's why you feel good because your brain is releasing a chemical that you're sensing as a reward. The second one is serotonin. Serotonin um, is linked to, well, low levels of serotonin is linked to depression. And we know right now, unfortunately, uh, that there's a lot of students coming in uh, with um, a lot of baggage, right? You have students, we know one in five students in the United States where this video is being created, um, one in five suffer from anxiety or depression. So if you have 10 students in your classroom, you have two students. If you have 25 kids in your classroom, you have five students who we know have some kind of anxiety or depression. Serotonin linked to low levels. Um, gratitude increases. When you have your students in the morning tell each other what's one thing they're grateful for, that increases serotonin. When you feel important, when you have that accomplishment, it releases serotonin. So how can you recognize your students for the work that they're doing? Not the product, not the end product as much, but that they're staying on task, that they're, they may be struggling right now with a more difficult concept, but they're not giving up. So you just give them a little, boy, I see that even though this, you're struggling right now, you're sticking with it. There you go. You just leveraged some serotonin in the brain. Second happy chemical. The third one uh, is oxyto uh, oxytocin. Oxytocin is the trust hormone. Having students have conversations with one another when that trust and rapport is there, and Dr. Scanella modeled that on another video, how to establish trust and rapport, that releases oxytocin. So that's one of those good happy chemicals. Finally, another uh, neurotransmitter that you can elicit consciously in your students is endorphins. Endorphins are, um, help us with anxiety and depression. One way you can get your students to increase their endorphins, thereby um, lower than their anxiety, is through breath. Breath is what creates our brain reality. Um, every time you breathe out longer than you breathe in, you're um, eliciting your parasympathetic nervous system. 
so that your heart rate goes down, your blood pressure goes down, therefore your anxiety lowers. Uh, so I taught this little student to breathe in for four counts and out for six. Breathe in for four, out for six. And that's something when the basic skills teacher now brings her friends to the back table, that's what they do for 15 seconds before they start. It doesn't interrupt teaching and learning time, but consciously eliciting those endorphins so that the students can perform better and feel better about themselves, which then releases serotonin. Um, other ways that you can get uh, consciously create those endorphins is through laughter. Every time you get your students to laugh, and you know, you can be silly enough to make your students laugh, um, that releases endorphins. Also, if you love dark chocolate like I love dark chocolate, dark chocolate releases endorphins. So the more ways that you just become familiar with the conscious release of these happy chemicals in our brains, the more that you're kind of in the background uh, creating this state of mind that's very good for teaching, learning, and most importantly, engagement.